All right, guys, welcome back to this episode of Rolling with T-Bone. As we're not in the cage, I'm not on the bike, I'm at Appalachian Mountain Rides with the Milkman. How's it going, folks? We're getting ready to tell a story about a trip we took. Y'all stick around. guys welcome back to this episode of rolling with t-bone as we're sitting in the shop with the milkman if you're new here welcome in my name's t-bone i shoot motorcycle related content and any kind of content really as you can see we were supposed to go on a motorcycle ride today but it didn't happen so the weather kind of got iffy we were going to go across the chair hollow skyway but we ended up backing out of that because i just didn't want to get soaked and i can't let regina get wet taking chemotherapy because she has no immune system. But nonetheless, I woke up this morning with a story on my mind that I've never put on a video, I've never put it out there. So I thought today would be a good day to shoot this video and share it with you. And of course, I'm talking about the Alabama Slamma, a trip that me and him took to Corbin Hill, Alabama. Now we're going back probably 10 years, maybe a little bit longer, when I receive a phone call from him saying, I'm going to Alabama to pick up a Triumph motorcycle. He said, I need somebody to ride shotgun with me. Do you want to go? I said, sure. I got nothing to do, so we'll go to Alabama. So, <laughs> two guys from Blue Ridge, Georgia, jump in a S10 Blazer with a trailer, and away we go. To Atlanta, we hit 20, we go through Birmingham, raining, raining, raining. Now, going to Corbin Hill, Alabama, guys, there were some facts I didn't know about Alabama or Corbin Hill, Alabama, until after this trip was over. From Blue Ridge, Georgia to Corbin Hill, Alabama is 252 miles exactly, four hours and some odd change. <laughs> so we left with the grand illusions that we would probably be back by, you know, three, four, five o'clock at the latest, five o'clock. So going to Alabama, everything went pretty good until we got outside of Birmingham and we found a four lane gravel road. Dirt road, four lane with turning lanes, street signs, the whole shebang. And cars. 11 miles long. <laughs> and you would have thought, well, you know, they were done working, you know, the, for the week or whatever. <clears throat> Their equipment was parked to the side. There was no equipment anywhere. And there were cars driving on this four-lane gravel road. So we take pictures, we shoot some video, and we take off. And we're pretty well much mind-blown by the four-lane gravel road. Okay. So as we're going down the road with our minds blown over a four-lane gravel road in Alabama... I started noticing that the roads were getting flatter. I don't know what Alabama has against words, but there was no words anywhere on any street sign, on any exit, saying you're, take this exit. The one, two, three, four, five, that was the exits. And they all looked exactly the same until we got far enough into Alabama that we looked off to the left-hand side, and you could see the nuclear plant. And that started a whole new conversation. He looks at me, and he says, well, I hope this thing don't melt down while we're here. And, of course, that put all kind of weird shit in my mind that it would. But anyway, we made it to Corbin Hill, Alabama. Now, Corbin Hill, Alabama, if you look at it on the map, is exactly the next big town you come to after that is Tupelo, Mississippi. So that tells you how deep in Alabama we was. We were almost out of Alabama. So we pull up to this guy's shop. Okay guys, so we found this shop and kind of in the middle of nowhere, There's a couple old redneck boys out there. And we pull up to this shop and this motorcycle is not sitting in view for first. But 
as we get in and the deals start being made, there was two things happening at the same time. Number one, it, GW had a partner named Ed, and they would flip motorcycles. They would buy them, fix what was wrong with them, clean them up, and sell them. So Ed's on the phone with me, wanting me to tell him what this motorcycle looked like. And over in the corner, the bike's laying on its left-hand side because these bikes don't have starters. So that's even worse because they knew this bike didn't come with a starter on it, but yet they slammed it so low to the ground that you had to lay it on the side to crank it. You had to kick start it. Now, given all credit where credit is due, it crunk pretty easy after two or three shots of ether. Because the guy had said, it's been a while since I crunk it. So, Milkman takes it out and he rides it up the road and back down the road. And Ed is still on the phone with me saying, tell me about the bike. I said, dude, you're just going to have to talk to Milkman about this. Cause I said, the, the motor is good. I, we all agreed the motor was good. But... Everything else wasn't, wasn't all that hot. I think it was missing more parts than it had on it. But, I looked at I looked at Milkman and he said, okay, he said, I'll take it. And I'm on the phone with Ed. Now he starts counting out the money. Now, I thought five, 600 bucks would be the price for this bike. It's worth that. We had to drive all the way across Alabama to get it. I thought five, six hundred bucks, we got a deal. He's counting out the money and then he goes five, six, seven, at eight, I went <clears throat> nine, ten, thousand dollars. We got the motorcycle onto the trailer. Now here's the thing, they were loading up the motorcycle, it took four of us to lift it up, to get it over the hump, to get it up on the trailer because it was set so low. We got in the S10. Do you remember what I said to you? Not word verbatim. I said, did you really just pay $1,000 for that motorcycle? <laughs> he looked at me and he said, well, yeah. I said, did you really just pay $1,000 for that motorcycle? He said, yeah. So Ed calls back. I said, well, we've got the bike and we're on our way. And I said, did he really just pay $1,000 for his motorcycle? He said, well, yeah, that was the price. See, I didn't know the price going in. I thought five, 600 bucks. <clears throat> But the funny part of this was, on our way back home, <laughs> he's staring through the rear view mirror at the motorcycle, and I saw the gears in his head turning. He had already started making plans. He said, I'm gonna have to, he said, I don't think I'll have to do a whole lot. In the beginning, he said, I don't think I'll have to do a whole lot to it. But we missed the turn to go back to Atlanta, so now we're going vertical up Alabama and it's raining, and he's looking at this bike through the rear view mirror. I'm getting hungry and nervous because I've never went the full length of Alabama before in the rain. <coughs> we get through Port, Fort Payne, Alabama, and we're calling the wives, hey, we're okay, we missed the turn, we're having to take the long way home. Instead of turn around, we just kept going. We got to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Stop for gas. He gets gas, we back in the, we got some snacks, we got drinks. He said, I'm gonna to have to tear that motorcycle completely apart and start from scratch. He said, how am I gonna explain that to Ed? Because I had made a pretty big deal out of it coming back up the highway. I was like, man, I can't believe you give a thousand dollars for that motorcycle. I, I, I was, and I was, I was not being a good friend. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was kind of tripping out over giving a thousand dollars for a 1969 Triumph Chopper that was slammed so low to the ground you had to lay it on the side to crank it. But he knew what he had, so. Now here's where our points differed. Now this is his part where he tells you what he did after that fact. When we got the bike back, got it unloaded, and I looked at it, I called a buddy of mine, it's a welder. First thing we did was cut the neck off, re-raked it in, put it where it was supposed to be at, painted the frame, put it all back together again. When we were said and done, we had about $1,500, $1,600 in this bike. When it left the shop, it left the shop for 2,900 bucks. So, yeah, he rode my butt all the way back, but guess who got the last laugh? I'm the one going ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. <laughs> He's the one going, I don't know how you did it. But in all fairness, he turned it into a good looking bobber. They had 
completely exaggerated everything on the bike. But by the time he shortened up the neck, got it put back together, got it painted, got it built, put a coffin tank on it. Springer seat. Springer seat. Built a good looking bobber. Yeah, good looking hardtail bobber. Yeah, and built, built a, a sweet <coughs> a sweet triumph. And I'm not just a super huge triumph fan, but it, it turned into be a nice bike. But the moral of this story, I just wanted to share this was, you've heard that old saying, don't judge a book by its cover. Well, don't judge a book by its cover and then don't ride the guy who bought the book too hard because he'll prove you wrong every time. <laughs> but from the four lane gravel road to the rain, to the nuclear power plant, to the mist turn, to, the mist turn, to there being no exit name, no road names on any of the exits. Y'all, when I say Alabama looks the same from one side to the other, once we got through Birmingham, it all looked the same. Every exit looked exactly like the next exit. Looked like Florida. Yeah, it was worse than Florida. I think Florida actually marched their roads. One, two, three, four, five. That was the exits. And I said, well, where the hell does these exits go? He said, I don't know. I'm just riding on the main road. <laughs> we were afraid to turn anywhere. Now, one thing about it, though, it was a good ride. We yeah. Had oh, yeah, we, we had, had a blast. Ride. Yeah. We, we, we did. We had a good time. Because what was messing with us, too, was changing time zones. We went into Alabama and gained an hour, and then we came out of Alabama and lost an hour. By the time we hit Chattanooga, Tennessee, in the rain, it was already 11 o'clock at night. And I called my wife, and I was like, I, we're, we're, we're in Chattanooga now. She said, do you know where you're at? I said, yeah, we're in Chattanooga now. We're good to go. So don't judge a book by its cover. And... Don't go west of Birmingham, Alabama if you're looking for a good view because it all looks the same. But I just wanted to share that with you. We're actually getting ready to work, guys. I'm going to let you know. I'm actually starting today working on the Sportster Series. I know I've been talking about this for a while, but y'all keep your eyes open for that. But I wanted to do this episode of Rolling T-Bone and thank the Milkman for being here with me as I told the story of the Alabama Slammer. Mm -hmm. Now... He did hit me up with this one out of the blue. Yeah, I just showed up and said, we're going to make movie magic today. And he was like, well, damn, you could have at least called me and give me a heads up. That ain't how I do it. But because I can't give him a chance to say no, because <laughs> I'm not giving nobody a chance to say no if I can keep running. But uh, keep your eyes open for the Sportster series. Uh, now, I know i got people in Alabama who are watching this. Hooligans in Alabama. There's a couple others that are on my YouTube. I'm not making fun about it. I'm out of Alabama sometimes. And the dirt road. And the dirt, the four-lane gravel road, that was just, we still talk about that and laugh about that. To now, one day. thing that he did leave out of that, we did stop at a store and ask about that. And the story behind the dirt road was that the area that they were widening the road, they had ran out of money for the month. Yeah. Yeah. So, by now, I'm sure it's a paved four-lane. Yeah, yeah. You probably wouldn't find that four-lane gravel road if you went looking for it today. But just try to imagine being two boys from the mountains. Hell, I thought we was at home. I was getting ready to grab a beer and gas it. <laughs> yeah, we, we, to think of two boys from the mountains who dabble in a little bit of everything in their lifetime, all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, rolling up on a gravel road that's four lanes. And then we thought we'd reach the big time. But guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for going along with me down memory lane on this one.